What's up, everybody? Josh Riel here with the man, the myth, the legend, Joe Casada here at San Diego Comic Con. What's up, Joe? Josh, how are you, man? Very good, man. Hey, excuse me for one second. It's really early in the morning. Hold on. Sorry. Ah, uh, he brought the cup of Joe. Awesome. Right here on the IGN balcony. You think it's coffee. You think it's coffee. <laughs> it looks pretty good. Um, so, uh, Joe, you are the chief creative officer of Marvel, uh, which, correct me if I'm wrong, means whenever a comic makes a jump to another medium, like TV or movies, you are there to make sure it maintains the, the, retains the integrity of the property and make sure everyone's in character and make sure everything looks right. Is that that's, correct? That's a great way of describing it. You don't need me for anything. Yeah. You, 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 <laughs> no, I mean, but, but I'm, also, I'm also involved in the comic division as well. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, animation, uh, movies, television, uh, any translation of our characters, I'm there. I'm working on story. I'm working on design. Uh, it's it's uh, it's actually it's a pretty cool job. I, like I, I like to tell people that I get paid to do what I used to get yelled in school for doing, <laughs> which is basically sitting around all day daydreaming, coming up with stories, doodling. Uh, I used to get yelled at all the time for that, <laughs> and now you know I make a living at it. So it's it's uh, it, it's a you know I'm very very fortunate to. Uh, uh, to be doing what I'm doing. Cool. Uh, you know, what's your day to day like? Can you give me an example of maybe a decision you made or something you did where, where in a movie or a TV show, uh, where, where where can we see the Joe Casada effect? <laughs> you know, I, I I never like to point to things and say, oh, that's mine, that's mine, because really at, at Marvel, it's it's a, it's a it's a it's a group effort. It really is, and no one idea, no matter how original it is, comes from just the ether. You know, it's always one thing building upon another thing, building uh -huh. upon another. But you know, just 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 an example of what my day to day is like. You know, I was just meeting with one of our designers, had breakfast and we were going over some designs for one of our TV shows, uh, for one of our characters who's getting a new outfit. I'm not gonna tell you oh. who. Uh, not gonna tell you, but, okay. but this is a constant this is a constant thing, right? So, you know, I've, I, I will talk to our designer. Uh, now, uh, when I'm done with you guys, I'm gonna run back, I'm gonna steal the coffee, by the way. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna run back to my hotel room. I'm going to email the, you know, the rest of, the guys and and uh, and talk about our theories on the design, and then emailing starts back and forth. Artwork goes back and forth, and that's just one aspect of what I'm doing. Uh, you know, more, I have tons of scripts to read in my <laughs> in my room. <laughs> lots of lots of stuff. So uh, it's a fun job in the sense that uh, I, I never have to deal with numbers. It's all creative. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, right now in the comic books, there's a lot of status quos that have been upturned. Right. Uh, you know, Thor is a woman. Mm -hmm. uh, Sam Wilson is new Captain America. Are you? Excited or, or eager, or do you, do you have any desire to bring any of those big status quo changes to the movies? Uh, you know, I I'm always excited about all uh, of our stories and all of our characters. I never like this. I've learned a long time ago that that in the position that I'm in, it's very difficult for me to say I'm excited about this and I would love to see it as a movie because then what happens is it starts a flood opening uh -huh. a floodgate of fans who are like, "Where's the movie? Where's the movie?" or the other part of it, which is, uh, uh, you know, that that I have confirmed that a certain character will be getting a movie. So I, I try to avoid uh, sort of delving in those waters. I love all anything you say it becomes a headline. <laughs> it, just, it, it gets misinterpreted as a headline. Yeah, sure. And it's not anything I say, but but sure. I've learned that there's certain there's certain key phrases that I have to stay away from, and key questions I have to stay away from. The truth of the matter is that I love when we do stuff like that, especially when the stories are great. You know, uh, I, I love when we twist things around and, and and show the flexibility of our characters and how wonderful these icons are. Uh, and moving them forward, and and and, uh, and you know, gender switches, ethnicity changes. It, it, it doesn't matter. You know, it, mm -hmm. it's all it's all the you know the beauty of the Marvel universe. And to me, as long as the stories are great, I'm I'm along for the ride. I'm enjoying it. And, and yes, anything anything can be possible. You can see any of these characters show up anywhere, uh, and that includes animation. These are our TV shows. But you know. What's going to happen? I, I'm not allowed to say. Sure, sure, of course. Uh, we have a social question from oh. you, some from the IGN community. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know who said this, but Hello, IGN they, community. Yes. Hello. <laughs> uh, it says, "So excited for Spider-Man joining the MCU. Have you seen Tom Holland's costume?" Uh, I have. Yes. Yes. Does it look good? What do you think? I, I would hope awesome. so. Okay. It looks awesome. Uh, I've seen a lot of design work that's been done in the okay. costume, and. Uh, I, I think I think uh, there are elements of it that are really going to blow people away, where they're going to go, ah, oh, that's Marvel doing uh, Spider-Man. Okay. You know, uh, you know in the Amazing Spider-Man, they had it was, the first costume was very different. It almost looked like a like a Nike sneaker with like the sleek mm -hmm. design. But then yeah. they went to the more traditional one. Is Tom Holland going to be wearing a more traditional Spider-Man? You're, you're trying to trick me. It's not going <laughs> to work. It's not going to work. I played this game before. Sure, sure. How about this? Is he going to have the web shooters? That's always a thing. Like, I'm not going to play this organic? game. Okay. 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 No, okay. no. Okay. Away from the announcements. Things will sure. Things okay. will things will be revealed as they're meant to be revealed. Okay. So. How about this? Uh, just, what are you most excited about having Spider-Man back in the Marvel sandbox? And as far as the movies it's go, it's Spider-Man. <laughs> hey, what's not exciting about that? I mean, look, 
there is an, I can't imagine there's a person on planet Earth that can't relate to some aspect of Spider-Man or Peter Parker. Uh, and he is, you know, for all intents and purposes, he is Marvel's Mickey Mouse, right? That, sure. that you know, it, it, he, he is the icon that so much of what we have was built upon. So to be able to uh, to create that movie along with our Sony partners, uh, it, it's it's just it's phenomenally exciting, you know. And, and I know, uh, you know, Kevin Feige and his team, they've got some great ideas, some some uh, some wonderful theories that, that you know we we've all chimed in on. And and, and it's what, what's what's funny about Spider Man is that that it's it's. You sit there and, and you're at a creative meeting and everybody goes, well, what about this? Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's what we, yeah, what about that? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, that's what we should be doing, right? That, that's Spider-Man. We all seem to, 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 to be of the same mind about Spider-Man because there's certain, there's certain aspects of the character that are just iconic uh, and, and, and have, have been perfect since the moment they were created. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, so let's switch to Marvel TV. You know, Daredevil came and it was a big hit, got a great response, yeah. and it really was a... Uh, like a dark take on the character, different, like a dark, the dark corner of the Marvel universe. Right. Are you eager to explore that in like season two and all the other Netflix series? Yeah, well, you know, the, the, I, I'm, again, I don't want to speak too much about the other series because each one has their own, uh, their own flavor. But but it is the the, the, the smaller, darker part of the Marvel universe. Uh, I always say that you know, while the Avengers are about saving the world, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, and all the characters, they're about saving a neighborhood. Uh, they're about saving a block. Mm -hmm. uh, they're about saving an apartment complex. So, so it's 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 smaller, but the stakes still feel the same because they're just as important to the, to the people living in Hell's Kitchen, saving their neighborhood, is as important to the people in Manhattan when when aliens take, mm -hmm. started coming out out of the middle out of a portal in the sky, and the Avengers came to save them. Uh, the, the other big difference is also that, that these characters live in the neighborhood. Daredevil lives in Hell's Kitchen, so it's very, very personal. Hmm. Um, but we're through the Netflix platform, we're able to explore uh, a much darker sensibility, a much more adult sensibility, and even the choreography, the fights, uh, and the action. Uh, I think is is is, is heads, heads head and shoulders above anything else that's on television, uh, and that you know is just a testimonial to the incredible crew and cast that we have. Definitely, definitely, and Daredevil being a part of season two is sort of the really big surprise. Uh, that nobody really saw coming. So uh, there's also the worry of that because you know Punisher's such a big character in himself that he right. might take over too much of the series. Like, how do you play the balancing act between making a, still a Daredevil show yeah. while doing justice to the Punisher? You know that that that's that's why that's why we pay our amazing writers' room the big bucks. <laughs> uh, you know Doug Petrie and Marco Ramirez, our, our, our co-showrunners on the show, have concocted an amazing series, amazing season this this year, uh, and uh, and believe me, you know sparks will fly, uh, and. Uh, it's going to be pretty phenomenal. But look, we're so happy to have John Barenthal because we have such a world-class cast on Daredevil, and, and you know, and we have such a world-class actor in, in, in Charlie Cox that you wanted to make sure that, that we, we, we chose and, and were able to uh, to attain an actor um, who was on that same level. So I think the combination of, of seeing Charlie and John perform those parts uh, on the same screen, it's going to be epic, absolutely oh. epic. So cool. Um, also, you know, Elektra was announced. Yep. She's joining the cast. Is she uh, going to pick a side on this conflict? Or is she sort of a wild card in between? Again, you have to watch the show. Sure. But, but, but again, I can't say enough about, about Little Chung. Uh, literally, we, we scoured the world, scoured the world looking for just the right Elektra. And man, she is the character. She looks like the character. She walks like that. And, and then she has the martial arts training and, 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 and stunt uh, background that, that she can rely on. It's just it's gonna be it's gonna be really really awesome to see her uh, take over the role uh, and see how she embodies it and, and how she personifies Electra. Uh, but again, another world class actor uh, who I think is gonna bring something really special to to Daredevil. And I think we established a really good template with season one, uh, so fans uh, can hopefully expect you know much more of the same. Sure, sure. And you know you've been here, you've been at many comic cons, you know, you've been as many different roles, you know, as artist, right. as editor in chief, right. now here as chief creative officer. What has you most excited for this comic con? Um, you know, it's funny, they start to blur after a while. <laughs> um, for me, it's always the same thing. It, it's I only do two conventions a year now. I do this and I do New York, and maybe on occasion I'll throw in a third, but lately it's only been two a year. Mm -hmm. uh, the fans, it, it's really about meeting you know all you guys out there and, 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 and getting to say hi, uh, and getting to answer questions, and, and, and I do one signing, I think, on Saturday. Uh, to me, that's it. And also, you know, I get to catch up with a lot of business associates, people yeah. that I've needed to meet, needed to meet with. Uh, so there's a little bit of a business aspect to it, but but really, it's just it's just one or two times a year that I get to uh, to be a fan amongst the fans and and, and enjoy the media. 
Cool, cool, great. Joe, thank you so much for Thanks, being Joe. here. Joe Thanks. with a cup of Joe, everybody. It's Almost been done. awesome. Yeah. Rob was chief creative officer for all things Marvel, for all things from Joe. Everything is, uh, we're going to stay tuned to your cup of Joe panel. Sure. Yes, we expect absolutely. a big surprise. Absolutely. Uh, keep it right here on IGN. Thanks.